Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I've been hearing so much about radiation and stuff recently and some misconceptions and some preconceptions and so on. I thought I might cover it in a multi-part series. It is entitled The Basics of Radiation. In each part I will discuss a different part of radiation from alpha particles to beta to gamma and I will even get into x-rays, neutrons, proton radiation, and some other random sources, and a little bit of an understanding of what it means to you, how much to expect. This is purely for personal interest for people. This is not meant to be in you know lieu of like a college course or something to that effect. Uh, your prerequisites are the most basic fundamental knowledge of the atoms. You need to know what the term proton means neutron, electron. It would be helpful if you research the term ion and ionization, although I will try to explain what those are a little better. But just know what a proton, a neutron, and an electron are. Even though I will probably cover that for a half second, you should probably know what they are as well. But this is the basics of radioactivity. Okay, let's start out with a little bit about atoms. When you were really, really young, you knew about things like rocks and water. And then after a while, you were told that they, they were made of these little ball-shaped things, like this giant dice right here. And these little ball things were called atoms, and there were different types of atoms, and they would combine together to form molecules. Two or more of these guys bonded together, you could call that a molecule if you liked. And these molecules are what formed the matter that made up rocks and water, etc., Two hydrogen bonded with uh, one oxygen became H2, two hydrogen, O, which is oxygen. Everyone's familiar with that. I think H2O is probably just about as well known as E equals MC square, even if you do or don't know what that means. But over time, you probably took a little bit more advanced classes, and you started to find out that these atoms are not really made of what you thought they were made of. Let me pull out my things that hold this up and put this down a little. This atom right here is actually made up of a proton, often a neutron. Notice that these have ten sides to them. I'm just using this to demark what they are. These have twenty sides to them, just to demark what they demark it. Well, demark just to explain what they are. Anyhow, uh, these protons have a positive charge. So you would have an atom which is composed of a proton, positive one charge, and a neutron, zero charge. These are electrical charges. Together, they form the basic nucleus of an atom. This is the circular inner part of an atom. These two are bonded together by something called the strong nuclear force. It is one of the four forces, the fundamental forces of nature, and maybe beyond the uh, scope of this course. If you're interested in knowing more about why they bond together, you should look up something called quantum chromodynamic binding. But regardless, they bind together. They like to be close even though these charges aren't opposite. Remember opposite subtract? Because this is a different force, these pluses and these zeros, and that's called the electromagnetic force. It is uh, characterized by these little guys here called electrons. That is an electron. E-lec-tron. Tron. And it has a negative one force. So as you can see, our little atom, which looks like this from the top, but when you look inside it looks like this, has a positive, a zero, and a negative. And when you add these all together, they equal zero. So this is an, an electrical equilibrium of sorts. It's nice and steady. This is probably not a radioactive atom. So there's your basic uh, idea. These guys stick to closely together. These things spin. Well, they don't really spin. They, to be to be 100 percent accurate for those who care, they have things which are called probability dens uh, probability functions, whose uh, absolute value squared is their wave is their uh, density. But 
if you don't know what I'm talking about or don't care, which most of you do, then think of them like spinning, which is perfectly decent way to understand them if you're not going to become like a particle physicist or something. It's simple enough. All right. Now, let's move a little bit beyond this and talk about atoms in general. Atoms are characterized by a couple things. Generally, there are protons and there are neutrons. An atom's number of protons is its atomic number. So, for an element like this guy right here that has one proton, we'll call this, well, let's call it what it is. It's hydrogen. And it has an atomic number of one. That means it is one proton. And it has one neutron. So let, let me show you how to describe that. The atomic number, which is characterized by the letter Z, this is just the letter that equals the number of protons that are in it. Simply put, Z is equal to 1. Its neutron count is equal to 1 as well. Therefore, its mass number is equal to 2. Now you say, well, wait a minute. So mass number equals number of protons, which for whatever reason has a Z, and at this big old N for neutrons, well, that seems sort of weird. Why don't we just call it hydrogen if it always looks like that? Well, it doesn't always look like that. Let me give you an example. Say that you have an element. We'll call the element element E for element. That's, that's, that's what the element's called. All right, simple enough. Let us say that this element has 20, 20 protons normally. And normally, it has 20 neutrons. So it's a nice, happy, very equal atom. So its mass number equals 40. See? It's very equal. This element should have the same number of electrons as it does protons. It should. That's not always true, but it, it's often true. So technically speaking, if you wanted to put up a little E here, you could say that the uh, electron count should be about 20. All right, if you change the electron count by knocking an electron out of orbit or giving it an extra electron, you can ionize it a little bit. And if you add protons, that's going to change what it is. Adding protons has a tendency to turn this into whatever the next or previous element is, depending on whether you add or subtract them. But if you can change the neutron several times without that happening, let us say that we give this 21 neutrons. Well, this is now a different element. Te I mean, sorry, this is a different type of this element. It's the same actual element, same number of protons, about the same number of electrons. It'll probably, as a material in your very hand, look about the same as it did before. But it's a little different, maybe even radioactive. Now, because it is not just straight up E anymore, this is my pretend element, it would be categorized by number to, to, to distinguish it as different. And what you would do is you would write down the mass number. 20 protons plus 21 neutrons is now 41. 41. E41. So to give you a better example, cesium is a very common element. Cesium-137 is a radioactive version of cesium. The reason that it's called cesium-137 is to separate it from cesium normal. Let me look up. I can't remember off the top of my head what cesium has for a number. Let's look it up. I always forget things. All right, so cesium-137 is the radioactive version of it. Cesium normally has 55 protons, and if I look up its neutron count, let's see, uh, cesium-133, it has 78 neutrons. Okay, so 78 plus 55 is 13, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, is 13, 133. So, cesium-133 is the stable version. You don't need to write 133. 
because anybody who knows that you're just talking about cesium will look up the stable version. But this version is different. It has four additional neutrons. Well, I can't write very well there, but you see it has four additional neutrons added to it, four more. Those four neutrons are what causes cesium-137 to become radioactive. Now, I'm not going to get into all the various types of radioactive radioactivity in this particular video. There are, this is a multi-part video. But the point of this is to show you that there's these concepts of equality in atoms. And when you violate the, these concepts of equality, that is when you cause the possibility of radiation. All right. Now, let me show you some radiation, and let me delete this. My wife was very kind to write this out. She's a professional graphic designer, so she can do stuff like this. Although, for the record, to her defense, if anybody complains about this being all markery looking there, um, though she's like a complete total pro, I gave her a black magic marker, five minutes of warning, and scribbled out what I wanted, a piece of paper, and said, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. So, yeah, graphic designers do not like that. Anyway, let me erase all of this. You might hear my cat playing in the background. Like I said, this is not an educational video for like a college replacement. This is me. All right. First off, let's talk about, well, let's show some radio, radio, radioactive material. That's what everyone likes. You all know from my videos that I love potassium salt. Do you know why I like potassium salt? Because it's safe. It won't hurt you. You can even eat it but it ticks nicely so you can get a good feel off of it. Some people like really radioactive stuff like uranium and containing material, and that's neat, that's fine, that's good for them. I don't personally like to sub sub submit myself to these, those kinds of um, levels, even though they're probably safe. As you can see, my Geiger counter is counting away. Every one of those little pieces of radiation that fly off makes it tick a little. Now let's hook up my external speaker and see what kind of sound we get. Cut the speaker on. And let me plug up the Geiger counter. All right, it'll make a tick now every time it ticks. Not much. Let me put it on the potassium. And I have a second bag of potassium in case the first one's not enough. Let me put that right there where it'll get some pick up nicely. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, obviously radioactivity is detectable. You can hear it in the Geiger counter. And by the time that you're done with my three or four part video series, if you choose to listen to it, you'll know what that means. You'll know why it's happening. You'll know everything about it. Man, well, not everything about it. You don't have a PhD in physics or anything, but you get the idea, basically put. This sand, well sand, excuse me, this potassium salt that I bought at the store is making my Geiger counter tick. If you don't find that interesting in any way, I don't know what to tell you. It's not that amazing. I've seen people that put stuff on these that make them squeal and scream. People who know me know that I've been around radiation in the 20,000 plus count range before. Oh my god. But anyway, now let's talk about the basic types of radiation there are. And I have videos that are going to go into this into this very set of subjects, one at a time. Each video will be dedicated to a specific form of radiation. So you needn't worry that I'm not going to address them. All energy that emi is emitted from everything, and for, uh, like, like the light, for example, up there, all of that energy is radiating away from things. When something radiates away, it is called radiation. The most common radiation people will know about is the electromagnetic radiation, like uh, electromagnetic fields and light. Well, whenever radiation is powerful enough to knock one of those electrons out of orbit, or cause the atom to become unstable in some particular way, or various other effects, whenever it directly affects atoms like that, it is called ionizing. This is ionizing radiation it is capable of causing the atoms to become damaged around me a little bit. There are many types of radiation ca categorized by Greek symbols that 
show what each one is. There are alpha particles, which I'll go into detail in another video about what these are. There are beta particles, and they come in the beta minus, beta plus, and beta capture. By the way, this thing right here is undergoing this type of radiation, beta. All right. Also, um, maybe I don't want to put those little symbols in here. I don't want to. Additionally, there is photon radiation, like gamma. This also undergoes a little bit of gamma now and then, too. There are additional radiation sources, such as X-rays, which are sometimes called Rankin rays in various countries. Everybody knows what an X-ray is, because you go to a doctor and get one. That's a type of ionizing radiation. There is also neutron radiation, proton radiation, including antiprotons, like yours truly. There's many, many other types. There's uh, muons and mesons and uh, God only knows every conceivable type of energetic small particle you can think of. Um, all of the lepton family, that's what produces these uh, um, unbound uh, hadrons that get blasted away at really high velocities, all kinds of crazy stuff. And they can be ionizing, like this stuff right here. And so our world is surrounded by these, and this Geiger counter is our portal to understanding because the Geiger counter allows you to see and detect the radiation around you. It only allows you to measure it in certain cases, generally just detect, which is what it's doing right at this moment. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty lovely job at it. And the speaker makes it sound really great. For my next part of the video, I'm going to discuss alpha particles where they come from, what they mean, and how they affect you. You might look up a little bit about them if you're interested. This will be a multi-part series over multiple days because it takes me a little while to come up with these each day. And um, I'll try to have my little Geiger counter out here ticking away so you can see random stuff with it. Okay? Well, anyhow, um, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. That is Tom at anti-proton.com and if you go there and you go to uh, slash dat like data but just dat you can actually see my most latest and up-to-date radiation readings and if you go here and you click at the top of the on one of my top links, I have a, uh, a link about radiation, where you can actually go and see my last readings for the for the my, my readings for the last month, as well as some other interesting things. Oh, there you go, got some good readings there. And hopefully you'll find this interesting and you'll learn something. And based on your comments, perhaps I'll learn some things from you. But anyway, let me know what you think. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com and um, bye bye